So in this video, I want to talk about the forthcoming Rings of Power TV show by Amazon Prime. Um, it's in a lot of comments on it, so just going to weigh in with my own sort of thoughts. First off, there's been some comments about the diversity that they've projected in teaser sort of posters uh, and imagery and honestly there's that's no issue it should be no issue um really it's the main thing always has to be that the story is good the diversity doesn't matter timeline now this is concerning i mean I understand condensing it. It's, I mean, really, in the appendices, from what I've heard, what they're being driven by, is basically three pages of a timeline. That's that's the sum of what they're really working to in Rings of Power. And I'm probably going to do a video on that. The thing that bothers me is because they've said they didn't want to keep changing the human actors but this is a critical factor into plot really humanity has the the gift of mortality that they are inevitably going to die um and this is contrasted versus the immortality of the elves and Really, it's a massive factor for how Sauron is able to seduce humanity into doing what they go on to do. I mean, this is all sort of, assumably, revolves around the creation and the destruction of Numenor. And one of those big factors in the destruction of Numenor is the fact that humanity is seduced and coerced by Sauron to take up arms against the gods because they're mortal. This is a massive, massive issue that I can understand there's a, I don't know, a viewer's concern that they're viewers aren't going to follow the plot I mean go back to the Witcher everyone was a little bit oh, so what's going on and not quite grasping the the different timelines um, and obviously you go back to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings there's a few things they changed for viewers perceptions in particular there's one point when Faramir is leading Frodo, Sam and Gollum to Osgiliath, before they get there, you see it in the distance, and in the cinematic release specifically if I remember rightly they edit out Osgiliath in the distance so that we, the viewers, don't mistake it for Helm's Deep, because obviously you've also got the Helm's Deep story going on, and there was a concern that viewers would think that they're heading to Helm's Deep and that it would look the same. Um, yes, there are people that are casual viewers, haven't read the books, aren't complete nerds for the law. Whether they're that stupid, I can't honestly say. I don't know. I don't think they should be, but I might say. But timeline, I think really, especially with the limited body of works you've got to go from, ignoring the timeline for me is an issue. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, see, next thing, images. I mean, there's some actors that are stepping into big, big shoes to fill. I mean, really, there's three big characters that are active in this timeline two of which we know are definitely in Rings of Power which is Galadriel and Elrond 
which in the Peter Jackson movies are played by massive, massive actors in Kate Blanchett and Hugo Weaving. And we've got to give the new actors the chance to put their own spin on what are beloved characters. I mean, it's this is we're talking about Galadriel and Elwand, who are massive, massive figures in the history of Middle Earth and instrumental in the events surrounding The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. I mean, admittedly, really, by the time we get to The Lord of the Rings, their influence is more from what they do in the shadows. Um, they've spent their power in many ways, but this is not to take away from the fact that they are immensely powerful. I mean, one of the things I'd be interesting to sort of see if they're including it, which the trailer suggests, is showing how boss Galadriel is. We get an uh, idea of it in The Hobbit when she confronts Sauron. Um, she is, without doubt, probably the toughest sort of of the free peoples certainly of, of the elves in Middle Earth. I mean, she is immensely powerful. And one of these things which is referred to in the First and Second Ages is she is one of the elves that crosses Helcrax, which is no mean feat. It's just one of the instances that proves that Galadriel is capable of enduring hardship and challenge and is not someone to be messed with or trifled with. Anyway, I, th I think sort of give these guys a chance. I mean, they've probably already wrestled with these demons that, that sort of they're going to be compared to Kate Blanchett, to Hugo Weaving. And they've taken the brave step to do it. Obviously, the other thing with the trailers and the photos being released is to talk really about the mythology of, of Middle Earth. I mean, I get it. We've We've all built up in our mind's eye sort of images that the trailers thus far don't really conform to. I mean, both Peter Jackson's Middle Earth films and Game of Thrones, really, have set precedents. Uh, and the show is going to try to appeal to both of these audiences. And hopefully it's not going to fall flat. I mean, I, th I think sort of, we don't, as nerds of Lord of the Rings, we don't really picture Galadriel as being sort of someone walking around in plate armour, fighting but maybe it's right to have those preconceptions challenged. Um, uh, ultimately, I think one of the things is when Peter Jackson was making the Lord of the Rings trilogy and when they had their massive getting all the crew and production team teams back together for The Hobbit, it was very much a labour of love for The Hobbit films, but in Lord of the Rings, he brought together sort of like the artists and costume designers and all the people that for the longest time have created for all of us before before the, Peter, the Lord of the Rings films came out the images that fed our imaginations and Peter Jackson pretty much cherry-picked from these people and their law for Lord of the Rings 
to create certainly the visual imagery for the original like Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, and let's not forget the fact that Peter Jackson made some significant changes to the story of Lord of the Rings, of which there's a couple. <laughs> it's like I could go on about and Jade, if you're watching this, it's my wife, she'll already go, I know what he's thinking about. It's to start off with the complete change to Aragorn's story. One of my favourite scenes in the books is Gandalf confronting the Witch King as the Witch King goes to enter Minas Tirith. Um, they're sort of Aragorn's summoning of the dead. That that whole sequence, I mean, of the YouTube video in this playlist where I read that section and the fact that it's Aragorn's will, his driven purpose, that summons the dead, that Gimli and Legolas and the Rangers of the North, Elrond's sons, follow Aragorn, and none, none of them are as powerful as Aragorn in that moment. <clears throat> and of course, Peter, that's just a, well, change that for cinematic simplicity, beauty, whatever. Um, I don't want to be king. It's, it's like Aragorn's whole life has been dedicated to becoming king. But we can change that for the films. And say so it's just that sort of, in a way I'm mad about that. I'll always be mad about that. But I can also go, yeah, I understand. I understand those changes being made and the Lord of the Rings trilogy amongst my favourite films. Um, so I think ultimately, to wrap up, to talk about the Rings of Power, there are some concerns. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in eating the lembas. Let's watch the show. Give the guys a chance and see if it delivers or not. That's all I have to say. So if you've watched this and listened to me no doubt a little bit, cheers. See you next time. Thank you.